So your teacher told you that you're going to be making a self-portrait out of cardboard. And not only are you making a self-portrait out of cardboard, it has to be wearable. You have to put it on your head over your body. Um, and it has to have a nice connection. It has to sort of balance and stay on without you holding the head on. So how are you going to accomplish that aspect of it? Um, in this video here, I want to give you a couple pointers or starting places. This is by no means a def definitive um, way to approach this assignment. In fact, I'm always impressed with how inventive you as students are and coming up with new ways and new methods of doing things. But I do I did want to just give you like a quick little, um, a few little pointers that might be a good place to start, especially if you're feeling a little bit stuck or like you don't know what to do. At least you could give yourself a base structure from which to build from that you could then expand. So let's get started. Okay, the first method that I want to show you for um, creating a kind of framework that you can wear and build off of is a really simple method where we're gonna just take some cardboard and make a band the diameter of our head and make a couple straps so that it stays put. It's almost like we're making a little ball cap and that will create a really great foundation for you to build off of for creating an additional um, form. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is grab some cardboard. Pay attention again to the corrugation. It's going to fold easier or bend easier one way than it is the other. If you have a soft tape measure that might be useful but it's totally not necessary. I couldn't find mine so I just grabbed a piece of fabric scrap, a string, yarn, a shoelace, um, anything will work. And what you do is you just wrap it around your head until um, these two ends touch. And then I just put my thumbs where both of those um, uh, strings overlap and open it up. And then I have a, you know, a good accurate or a good estimation of what um, my head circumference is. And so, I'm not going to cut this perfectly to that length, but it is going to let me know that, you know, that's probably plenty of cardboard. Okay, so here I'm going to cut out two strips of cardboard, and they're maybe about an inch and a half wide. One is going to go around the circumference of my head, and here I'm measuring it just so it feels comfortable sliding on and off. Put a little hot glue to hold that in place. I'll put that ring back on my head and now I'm going to do a piece that's front to back. So I glue the back on. I've made sure that strip is long enough. I was checking to see where it landed on my ears because that top strap is going to be really important for how far that band can sink onto my head. And then I just like to put one more across the side for a little more stability and an extra area to add attachments onto. Okay, so this is a really basic little um, headpiece that you can make that you can then build off of. So if I were to make a really form-fitting shape, I might actually cut a few layers of cardboard and kind of glue them here so they have a little bit of spacing around the cardboard and my head. Um, and if I were making something much larger, then I would sort of figure out other ways of building with um, more robust blocks of cardboard or maybe even pieces of foam or something that would kind of help hold that other shape out from this particular shape but this is a really great starting place. And remember, if you do start making a head that's really sort of close to your head, 
make sure that you have a way that you can get in and out of that head. So I've had students before that have had really form-fitting ones and they have a way that the back sort of opens up or that um, maybe it hinges. So just think about that because these portraits do have to be fully in the round. Okay, so I'm also going to show you another method which is just a basic box method. Okay, I have my box. So <laughs> this is just, um, you know, regular old box. I did look for an opening that was big enough to fit my head inside of, but also it didn't quite um, fit the way that I wanted it to fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape the top and the bottom of this box together, and then I'm going to cut a hole here because I think that this is going to work better for my purposes. Okay, I have the box taped up the way that I wanted so that it can fit over my head a little better, but it's still isn't staying where I want. I'm also deciding do I want it to be the narrow way or the wide way, sitting forward or sitting back. If I have it like this, it's wider, but it doesn't really fit on my shoulders very well. So I think I'm going to go with it facing forward, but I'm going to cut out some little um, shapes for my shoulders to fit in, and that's going to help provide um, a little bit better transition to my body and also provide just a little bit more support um, and stability. So I've cut out one shape and I'm just tracing that to cut out the other shape. And as you can see now, I have a box that balances a little bit better. At this point I can let go but it still might need a little bit more work. Okay, so it looks like I've got something that might work. Basic box. It wants to lean forward a little bit, but let's say I combine the two of these together so I could actually put this helmet on and then I could have it mounted inside of this box based on where my shoulders are. And maybe I have a little spacer back here that helps to hold that in place. Or maybe you don't want to do that double route, so you might just have to figure out a way that you play with the balance of this a little bit. As soon as I start adding features onto the front of this, it's going to get really heavy. So I am going to have to figure out a way of counterbalancing this and sort of playing with, um, playing with that. Finally, don't forget to cut out a place to be able to see out of your cardboard box and also to breathe. We want you to be able to move around in these safely. So depending on how you're planning on fleshing out the rest of your form, you might need tiny little holes that are just really discreet. But if you're going to be adding a lot more cardboard onto the face of this, you also could cut a much larger opening. Maybe even you cut a large opening and put a little piece of mesh or screening behind it. Okay, so you're not going to be able to get away with just cutting some holes in a cardboard box and calling that your self-portrait. You're going to have to flesh out some of the details and for some of you that might be trying to make it more realistic and for others it might be a little bit more abstract or a little bit more graphic or cartoony. Whatever the style or the aesthetic, 
That's totally up to you based on the ideas that you're trying to convey. But I did just want to give you some quick little tips um, for um, making eyes or rounded shapes. Um, the same thing that I'm going to demo here for this eye, you could use to create a mouth or cheekbones or a chin or forehead, ears. Um, all of those things can be done just sort of using some of these basic techniques that I'm going to show you. Something really important to keep in mind, though, when you are making these sculptures, is that sculpture is all about light and shadow and creating areas of contrast. That's how we perceive form. So you're going to want to think about shifting planes, whether that be flat planes or whether that be sort of more rounded planes, but that's how light is going to bounce and reflect and make things seem more three-dimensional than box-like. So this is a quick eyeball that I made. You can see it's got a little bit of roundness to it. And some of the things that I was trying to play with were, um, again, light and shadow and shifting of planes. I do have a light source above me, so what you can see is that this area is lighter. Underneath this little eyelid that I made is a darker shade. Um, in order to create the um, pupil, I actually cut a hole out of the um, ball that I made so that light is sucked into there, and that's what creates that um, sort of void or the pupil. Um, as opposed to drawing the shape on or gluing the shape on. If I want to create that contrast, then I can cut or remove that shape. So this eye was made with just a couple different parts. So you can see I have this little opening. I had some scraps that I, you know, I didn't intend to make eyelashes, but they actually looked like little eyelashes. And then this is just a little ball that I made out of cardboard. Now, if you were to look at a beach ball, a tennis ball, um, a basketball, right? They're all shapes that are assembled together by using flat patterns. And so I did not um, measure any of the shape as I was making. I just sort of thought about the general idea of what a beach ball looks like. A beach ball has these sort of oval shapes, but that have a point at the top and at the bottom. Now, of course, you could go online, you could find patterns for these, you could figure out the mathematical equation for um, how many panels you need to make a certain size and what that um, radius is, but I'm just, I'm just gonna eyeball mine for um, the purposes of my demo here. Um, so I could cut these out as individual pieces, but what I'm going to do is actually draw them on this sheet of cardboard as if they were one continuous unit. So I'm freehand drawing these shapes. You could also draw one shape and trace it, because as you can see, I didn't get them all exactly the same but that's okay. Um, for the aesthetic that I was going for, I didn't mind if it was a little bit wonky, but if you need more precision, you should certainly make a template and trace it. So what I'm doing now is kind of conditioning the cardboard. I'm rounding those edges a little bit, and now I'm sort of pushing them together to see how they meet. If I don't like how they're coming together, if it's not round enough, I can always readjust those curves. This seemed okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually taking some blue painter's tape and I'm taping the tips of this together because it's such a small form that it's going to be easier for it to be held together if I have tape to do the job. So I'm going to put glue on the inside one of the things that I like to do are to make these little tabs or these sort of like little band-aids. So I'm just taking scraps of cardboard directly off of my table, putting glue on them, and then bridging those between the two pieces that I'm assembling. It makes things just a little bit stronger. 
And so that's something that I like to do when I'm assembling it. So you'll continue just to sort of work your way around the top edges and the bottom edges. And eventually you'll end up with a rounded shape that you can then carve out details in, and then that's just a closer up look of that eye form, just so you can kind of see the shifts of different planes. And there you have it. So you could build a couple of those, add them onto your box layer. You could put more shapes around that to really tie it into the form, but there's lots of different ways that you can add detail to your form using similar methods to this. So have fun.